YouTube, what the crap's going on, Heir of Carthage here, and yes, it's time for a little Dread Saurian action. Um, what's more scary than a Dread Saurian? Well, number one, a Dread Saurian, and you don't have any tools to take it down, but two, a Dread Saurian who can literally, like, phase shift straight through solid matter, like a tree. I mean, this is terrifying technology that the lizards have come up with, Lord Croak from beyond the grave is certainly keeping the studies going. So yes, we have a Dreadsarian, not a feral Dreadsarian. There's a Dreadsarian in an army of skinks. There are a few red-crested skinks in the middle, uh, about four skink cohorts on the flanks. There are three Cold One Spear Riders providing some mobility and anti-large, a Bastilodon revivification crystal, and then over here we have a skink priest, Lore of Beast, um, as well as a red-crested skink chief. And they are up against the, uh, the fightiest gets in town here. This is going to be the uh, Greenskins, led by Azag the Slaughter. He's got Spirit Leech only as a spell here. And uh, there's a couple of Black Orcs supporting a front line of Goblins and Orc Boys. And then in the back we've got some uh, Orc Error Boys and they are supported by a couple of units of Boar Biggins and some Spider Riders, Spears on the flank, and then a Giant so, let's see how this plays out. It's interesting to see the pick of the giant against the lizard bin when an arachnorok spider is specifically anti-large and pretty decent versus infantry as well. A giant, though, causes huge damage. You just really have two downsides. It's low leadership and low armor. Um, and those are two pretty big downsides. But otherwise, I mean, giants cause tremendous amounts of damage. Now, the greenskin infantry is far superior here. The, uh, the lizard men not bringing Saros Warriors um, for cost's sake means that the low tier Greenskin Infantry will actually be in pretty decent shape and then the higher tier stuff like the Black Orcs will just absolutely crump the Lizardmen Infantry here and you're going to see the Dread Saurian immediately get into a Black Orc and it's supported by the Bastilodon and the Orc Error Boys are of course going to open fire on it as quick as they can we're going to see uh, some Cobalt Spear Riders here I think they get Miss Microed into this fight so a bit of a mistake here. There's some skink skirmishers out on the flank. Probably looking to get some shots at Azag. And I'll kind of just give you an overhead here. The giant immediately gets in. And he starts putting some massive damage down on the Dread Saurian. The Dread Saurian is attacking back. And doing pretty good damage too. Staggering the giant in the process. But arrows just don't miss. And the Saurian has really good armor. But when you don't miss, I mean just the full damage basically is done here. So these uh, Cold One Spear Riders need to get pulled out of there. Some of the others are coming around very patiently uh, done here. They catch the Greenskin Cavalry unawares, get a nice charge there. They'll perform nicely. There's another Skink Skirmisher on that flank. And then some of the Skinks with the help of the Dread Saurian busted through the main line and actually got to some of the Skirmishers. And now we're going to have a summon of a Feral Manticore as well. And see the Dread Saurian move over and continue to work the next infantry unit. It needs to be focused on dishing damage to the highest value targets possible, which at this point would be the Black Orcs. And the Giant is just kind of following and trying to dish damage to the Dread Saurian everywhere it gets a chance. I'm sure that the Bastilodon is being used to put hit points back on the Dread Saurian. You can see the Red Crested Skink Chief here gets tangled up with the Giant. This is not where he wants to be in life. Now with Azag, Black Orcs, other units around, the Dread Saurian's certainly going to be taking a lot of damage, and the Red Crested Skink Chief gets vomited on, and is just taking brutal damage from the Giant, who has basically KO'd him from the fight at this point. The Feral Manticore is being used to help clean up in the background. There's a pretty significant Lizardmen force in the back of the battlefield here. We'll see what happens. The Revivification Crystal going off here. Azag really in a fight that he shouldn't be in at this point. There's a lot of large targets here, and I, he is very lucky to have gotten out of that fight because there was so much cavalry present. And there, the Dread Saurian actually making itself pretty well worth it at this point. I think it's KO'd two Black Orcs. Not quite up to its total cost yet, but not bad. However, the Red Crested Skink Chief, as most of us would, dies to a... Um, Absolute deluge of vomit from the giant. Dread Saurian has a little bit of help here from the Cold One Spear Riders, which is going to give him some anti-large punch.
to add to it. That giant is actually doing quite well, all things considered. It's getting some good hits in, and the terror, without the leadership present, takes hold and routes a whole bunch of Lizardmen units. And uh, the Dread Saurian routes as a result of being left alone there, so a bad break for the Lizardmen in the middle of this battle. Not what they needed. The uh, Skink Priest is back, and back here some Cold Ones did manage to finish up some Boar Boys, and the Skink Skirmisher is keeping a few of the routing units from headed back, and now we're going to see the Lizardmen begin to do a little regrouping. The Spirit Leech there, trying to help finish off the Dread Saurian, and I'm not really sure what Azag was thinking here, but he landed amidst a bunch of Cold One Spear Riders. Unless he gets a Terror out very quickly, which he could, he's going to be in a very dangerous place here. Boy, those skinks back there. That giant just gave them, <laughs> gave them the business. The Revivification Crystal is back. You can see some Black Orcs back here as well. The Skink Priest, still very much alive. I'm kind of surprised Azag hasn't made for that Skink Priest. He'd be a good target. I think at this point, Azag wants to go keep the Dread Saurian from returning to the fight. And you're going to see him charge it. He gets poisoned by the, the Javelins. It's actually a pretty big deal here. And then the Saurian turns around and puts a huge hit on Azag. And then the continued poison there, it's enough to uh, basically finish him off. So Azag uh, went for a little more than he could chew there up against the Dread Saurian. But there's still a giant to be dealt with and a few black orcs, and uh, Azag did manage to get a wah off right before he died. You're going to see um, some of the uh, skinks try to keep their distance, really. I think the lizard men are just trying to get things regrouped. There is a boar boy biggin back over here, and if it does charge these skink cohorts, then they will almost certainly be dead. There's also a forest goblin spider rider. And now we're going to see the Revivification Crystal going off as the Dread Saurian attempts to pull down the dragon, but... Or, sorry, the uh, Giant. That Giant, though, is... He's a tough target, and the Saurian is very weak right now. He has a thousand hit points left. So he would certainly be better used against almost any Greenskin unit besides the Giant until the Giant is properly worked. And you can see here that the Lizardmen do manage to get regrouped and pull out a victory from what definitely looked like it was about to be a defeat. Had things gone slightly different and Azag actually been able to reroute the Dread Saurian, the end of this battle would likely have been quite different. Um, so here you got to see it actually work. And of course it's Reptile King who's putting in time <laughs> trying to make the new Lizard units work. I, I think you are going to see a, a Dread Saurian working from time to time in um, in multiplayer games. It's not going to be all the time because there's a lot of situations in which they're just going to get crapped on. And here you saw the Orc Air Boys. Not even a particularly good archer, but with three of them, and like I said, every arrow pretty much doesn't miss. Combine that with a little bit of Spirit Leech and some Giant, and the Dread Saurian took tremendous damage. Though he did manage 131 kills. A good number of those kills were against Black Orcs neither of which were able to pick up a chevron on the battlefield, even though they are up against significantly in, uh, inferior infantry. So in that respect, the Dread Saurian did dish a lot of damage to two very valuable units. But those two units don't add up to the cost of that Saurian. In the end, the fact that he got rid of Azag at the very end and helped create a hole in the main line for the Red Crested Skinks to get through and get to the archers, he probably did pay for himself at that point, right? Because you help cause the route in the middle, that allows you to put pressure on the um, secondary units or the support units of the Greenskin army. So I think in this case the Saurian was useful, but that poor Red Crested Skink Chief, press F for him because he got absolutely sat on by the giant um, taken out of the fight really quick. So nice game to Sea of Star and Reptile King. Thanks for submitting this one, Reptile King. I know you're doing your best to uh, get those lizards all the love they deserve. They are a pretty good faction these days. Um, they, they are pretty fun. I don't like what they did to the ancient salamander, but I like pretty much else or everything else about the lizards, uh, especially in campaign. I find them to be a supremely fun faction in campaign right now. Um, very, very good. Uh, one of my favorites. Multiplayer, I'm not great with them, but I've seen a lot of people use them very well. 
Um, I just haven't kind of worked out all the nuances of kind of how to pick some solid all-around Lizardmen armies that can deal with different scenarios, right? It's one thing to just take a Lizardmen army to Dino Stomp people, and that works in certain cases, some it doesn't, but to have a little more finesse with them, know some skirmishing builds, and to know some different types of infantry builds and when to take those, it's fun. It's fun. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this one. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button so you can get more. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.